So let's pull the salmon out as always. Paper towels are your friend as a butcher or a fishmonger. Um, wow, this is super fresh. So pat everything dry for your first step. Now it's time to begin the cure. We're going to salt the fish first. So on a sheet pan, I'm using kosher salt and I want a pretty generous coating on both sides. We're gonna do the top and then we're gonna flip it over. I mean, don't go crazy. We're not trying to make grab locks. We just want contact with just about every piece of the salmon. Once that's done, it's time for it to take its first rest in the fridge. We're gonna fridge this for about one hour. Next, it's time for step two, the uh, vinegar bath. Check out how much moisture that's leached off the fish just from salting. We're gonna use straight up rice vinegar. Uh, don't get fancy, not seasoned, regular old rice vinegar. So in a container that'll fit the fish um, perfectly, I'm gonna pour in just a bottle of rice vinegar. I just wanna barely cover it because we're gonna add a little ice and a little water. So uh, it, you can get about 75% coverage. Let the ice and the water do the rest until just covered and let's let that rest for about one hour again. Once that is done, you can see that the fish is starting to cure from the outside in. Um, I'm checking for a little kind of a hazy color. And again, I wanna pat this dry very, very well before we go into the freezer phase. So pat dry completely, then we're gonna wrap with a uh, plastic wrap, uh, completely airtight, as tight as you can get it. And then it's going to sit in the freezer for at least 48 hours. You could go longer, but um, you wanna do at least a minimum of 48 hours. I'm doing both of my fillets here, getting them nice and tight, and then we're gonna go let them freeze to kill all the germies inside the fish. The salt and the vinegar are gonna give you phenomenal flavor. The freezing is going to make sure it is food safe. Once that's done, just slack it off from freezer to fridge. Uh, when it's nice and soft, we're gonna unwrap it. Uh, you guessed it, pat it dry once again. And we have to cut this into sushi sized pieces. I like to measure with my palm, uh, about four to five inch wide. And we're gonna cut them in half and you can see the little bit of the cure. So we want to cut the cure and the skin around the fish. And what's going to be left is going to be the sashimi or whatever you want to use for it. Always remove pin bones. I've got a little pin bone puller here. And I like to start with the skin side. So as I come under and skin the fish, you'll see me open up the flesh like a flap and then also cut just a little bit of that cure from the side. I'm trying to make this a block without wasting too much meat. I do have to cut that top portion off. And this, by the way, guys, is called Saku Dori. Saku Dori is the piece of rectangular fish that is ready to be cut into sushi or sashimi. Uh, these are very thin pieces because this is wild caught fish, but big commercial uh, Scottish salmon are going to be a lot thicker, so you're going to end up with a bigger block. But this is like old school style right here, like a smaller, probably 10 to 12 pound fish. So cut all the cure around and I'm going to demonstrate two cuts. First, from cutting from my weak hand side on an angle, this is uh, the cut that would be for nigiri or the sushi fish that rides over the rice. All right, and off the right side, I'm gonna cut a perpendicular cut, just straight blocks, and uh, that's gonna be for a sashimi cut. Uh, I just wanted to show you the two types, so I'm gonna eat them either way. Uh, I can show you how to turn these into poke um, or other sushi sashimi dishes, but it's that easy. My favorite accompaniments are just a dip of soy, not too much. Um, I've got my sticks here and a little bit of wasabi. Don't judge me. Wasabi from the tube is better than the stuff that's powder. Well, that's it. Thanks to Real Good Fish. And now you know how to turn a fish from the store into sushi and sashimi. Enjoy.